Hello and welcome back to Calculus 2, Math 112. Today we have Lecture 34. Our topic today is integration in polar coordinates. We want to calculate areas. Exactly going along with the formula for the area of a circular sector, the element of area is dA, which equals one-half r squared d theta. This means that for any given equation, where r is given as a function of theta, the element of area is one-half r squared d theta for areas calculated as sectors beginning at the origin. So this element represents the area of a differential sector. Now let's take a look at an interesting example. A circle again, r equals 2 cosine of theta. This is a circle centered at the point r equals 1, theta equals 0, x is 1, y is 0. We know the area of the circle is pi because it's pi r squared and the radius is 1. Now let's use the element of area to verify this. The area is the integral from 0 to pi of 1 half r squared d theta. And so 1 half r squared d theta gives us 1 plus cosine theta d theta using the double angle formula. And we integrate from 0 to pi. What we get is pi minus 0 plus 0 minus 0. So the area does equal pi, as we expected. Now remember, this particular graph is completely generated when you let theta go from 0 to pi. You don't have to let theta go through any other values besides 0 and pi to generate the entire circle. So those are the limits for integration. Whenever you're using this area of a sector formula, you must remember that you need to find out the limits by looking at what values of theta give you, generate the curve that you want to find the area enclosed by. Okay? Now let's take a look at another example. The cardioid. Suppose r is equal to 1 plus cosine theta. We have a cardioid centered on the x-axis, the axis with theta equal to 0, and the area is 2 times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 half r squared d theta. So we just multiply everything out and integrate, and we have that the area is theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1 half theta plus sine theta, all going from 0 to pi. Now this is because the 2 and the 1 half canceled. And remember, when we integrate cosine squared theta, we have to use the double angle formula. So cosine squared theta becomes 1 half times 1 plus cosine theta, cosine of um, 2 theta. And what we see is that the limits take us from 0 to pi. So remember that uh, cosine squared theta is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And when we integrate that, we carry along the 1 half. The integral of d theta is theta, and the integral of cosine 2 theta is sine 2 theta over 2. And then we substitute in the limits, and we see that we get the area equals pi plus 2 sine pi plus 1 half pi plus sine 2 pi over 2 minus 0, 0, 0, 0, and the area is 3 pi over 2. Now let's just write once again the formula for cosine squared theta. 
It's one half one plus cosine two theta, and that's the identity we use to integrate cosine squared theta in all of our examples. Now here's another very interesting example. Suppose r squared is eight cosine two theta. We have a lemnus gate, a figure eight, and the area is just going to be the integral of four times the integral from zero to pi over four, one half r squared d theta. That gives you the total area enclosed by the lemnus gate, the entire figure eight. We're going to multiply by four because each of the quadrants has the same area component. Now, notice the limits. R starts at zero and then goes, uh, theta starts at zero and then goes to pi over four. At pi over four, the radius is zero because it's cosine two theta. So that means that our limits for the first quadrant are zero to pi over four for theta. And so we just multiply that by four. The integration is quite easy. And then we see that we get the answer eight. In general, if the lemnus gate is r squared equals two a squared cosine two theta, the area enclosed by that lemnus gate is two a squared. Whatever the coefficient of cosine two theta, that's the area enclosed by the lemnus gate. These formulas and applications of polar coordinates are going to become very useful to us in future courses. And in fact, in Calculus 3, we'll be looking at cylindrical coordinates, which utilize polar coordinates as well. Thank you for joining us.